talk about medical child abuse and narcissists. And this is a very important uh, message that I'm gonna try to communicate to you in this video because these things destroy lives, they take lives, and absolutely destroy the victim and um, of this kind of abuse. And usually victims of this kind of abuse will have so many things to struggle with as they reach adulthood and into adulthood as well. So medical child abuse, that is also known as Munchausen by proxy. Um, this is not a very common topic to talk about when we talk about narcissists. It's not very common to talk about at all. Um, and this is also a very underreported um, form of abuse of children. And I have made a video on this before where I talked a little bit about my own experience as a child growing up and being, you know, medically child abused. I don't know if that is even a term, but medical child abuse, I'm just going to try to explain to people what that is. And this is, this used to be a diagnosis that was called Munchausen by proxy. And uh, I guess it's also still referred to as Munchausen by proxy. And what that means is basically that the person, and it's usually uh, mothers that do this to their sons, but they will also do this to their daughters. But the typical scenario is a mother and a boy, kid, child, but also a mother and a daughter. Uh, fathers or dads you know they they also do this and but it's you know i think it, it's like 90 i don't know but it's like over 90 percent of the cases is, is mothers uh, what will happen is basically that uh, the mother will go to doctors with her child present her child as sick um, the child is not sick and the mother know that the child is not sick, um, very important to, to, to get in there. The mother know that the child is not sick. Um, the reason the mother is doing this is to look good. It is to get praise from the doctors. It is to get praise from the nurses. It is to look good to the external family as well so they can, you know, call people and tell them that how much they have done, you know, for their child so that they get uh, validated, seen, and praised. This is narcissism at its absolute worst and darkest. Because what these mothers, and I'm saying that loosely, will do, they will put their children through meaningless medical tests, endless medical tests, painful medical tests to get this feeling of reward of being seen they don't care how much pain their children have to go through for 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 them to be seen as a good mother and like i said the mother know that the child is not sick and these mothers are extreme manipulators it's it, it's not possible to even explain it but I will try what they will do like I said is they will go from doctors from different doctors because usually if they don't get their needs met at one doctor's place they will just go on to another doctor and drag their children or their child it's usually one at a time uh, around to different doctors to get the answers that she want um, and some doctors might cave in they might give in and start to give her children medication that the child absolutely doesn't need and the mother will put you know her children on medication that the child doesn't need again to look like a good mother 
sometimes the mothers will also induce sickness in their children, meaning that they will actually make their children physically ill, either through poisoning, food poisoning, uh, giving too much salt to their children. When Remember, this goes on when children are usually infants and very young. This can also go on when children are older, but usually this is happening when the child is not able to talk or to answer. Other things these, these um, mothers will do is um, they will starve their children, not giving their children food and water or something to drink. So the, ch the children will dehydrate and this can cause serious um, and deadly implications for a child. They might dehydrate, they might get kidney problems or basically die from this mistreatment and abuse. And all of this is done towards the child so that the narcissistic mother, which usually is also a psychopath in these instances, will get her feeling of being a good mother. So this mother does not care if her child dies. Well, she cares about it to the extent that she, a lot of these don't want the child to die because then they lose this opportunity to, to look good. But they don't care about the pain or anything. All they think about is how they look. All they think about is how other people perceive them. And they do not, it doesn't even enter their mind how the child is being treated. It's all about supply. It's all about being seen. It's all about being looked, that people look upon these people as good mothers, as sacrificing mothers. And like I said, this is narcissism at its most extreme and disturbing. And the children that grow up in this kind of environment has been severely abused. And like I said, a lot of children go through needless surgeries because of their mother's mistreatment of them. And they will often get, you know, um, contradicting stories about what happened to them so in this in these kind of families usually the mother is you know she is the supreme leader nobody else gets to speak to this child of hers because she owns it basically like a doll she treats it like a doll uh, and she thinks she can do anything she wants to this child and the child will grow up to hear the stories about how good her mother or good his mother was, um, how much she sacrificed for him, um, how much sick he was or she was. You will always hear this, these stories from the narcissistic mother in these instances. They will tell the story like they are the hero, like they are the one that um, is always seen in a good light. So the child will grow up and they will believe that this is the case. Usually what will happen when these children become adults is that these memories will come back in a very different form. It doesn't always happen, but when it happens, it's usually that way how it goes. And also what will happen is as the child grows older, uh, maybe these families get into a divorce, people feel more free to tell this child what really happened. Uh, there's a lot of shame in this family for that you know the other people in the family could let this happen to the child so it's not it's not going to be a lot of information that you get in these instances but usually that is how it reveals itself that that um uh you know for instance you know these dads might might uh, suddenly speak up they might tell you that you know you weren't really that sick I, you know and they might tell you the truth about what happened to you but other times like i said this might also uh, this might also uh, you know come back as traumatic 
memories uh, to you, what was really going on. And a lot of these mothers, like I said, these, these mothers that put their children through uh, medical child abuse, they will also do things physically to harm their children. For instance, choking, um, suffocating, suffocating with their palm, using their hands to, 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 to choke the child. Why they do this is so that they can pretend to be the savior when the child either vomits or passes out and they are the savior. So they go in in that situation then and the child is basically shutting down uh, because they're being abused at this point. They don't, so they only remember kind of like the scene where the mom uh, saves them or the scene where the mom comes in and saves them from what has happened to them. But they don't really recall the abuse. They don't remember when the mom was the one that actually put the pillow over their head or the, her hand over their mouth. And sometimes they also do this for, to make children vomit. And when the children vomit, uh, they will bring the child to the hospital and say that my, ch my child is sick, my child is sick. And they don't talk about anything they have done. And the child is, like I said, usually so small, and so young that they will not be able to contradict what the mother is telling. And, um, and this will also go on into, you know, when the child is a little bit older, what usually happens then is that the mother will uh, convince the child that it is sick. Um, she will tell the child to go along with the story that the mother is telling. Otherwise, she will punish the child when they get home. She will threaten to take away uh, basic things like food, shelter, um, and, and safety for the child if the child is not uh, saying what she wants it to say to the doctor. So for instance, a scene like this might look like the mother is telling the child that you have, um, you have chest pain, you have breathing problems, you have this, you have that. And the child will start to mimic these symptoms on behalf of her mother because he wants to please her mom. This is, it sounds really crazy, but this goes on. And mothers have extreme power all over their children. All parents do. But in this situation, these mothers are so, uh, they don't give up and they want their child to look sick. And they might also put makeup onto their children to make them pale, to make them look sick. Um, yeah, and, and they will go to the doctor and they make the child say what they want the child to say. And if the child says that, you know, yes, I feel like this, I feel like that, I feel like that, and they are kind of like, uh, responding in the way the mother is instructing them to do in front of the doctor, they will get rewarded. You know, they might get a toy, they might get, um, you know, something good to eat, something like that. Because then the child is playing along and the mother is, is getting her supply and her need of being looked good upon from the child. The child is playing along. So this is how this will look when the child grows older symptoms of these things is usually that you know if you work in a medical profession if you are a nurse and that's why i'm making this video if you are working uh, with children and if you if you are in a family and if you know other families what to look for is usually a mother that is is, is excessively concerned about her child all mothers are but these people are taking it to another level they talk a lot about how they, what they do, not so much about how their children is feeling because they don't care about that. So they will talk a lot about how, you know, how painful it was for, for them to look at their child in that situation, how, you know, how much they have done, you know, how tired they are and all these things. Uh, they will also have a great deal of knowledge usually about the disease uh, that they think the child has, and usually it might be a lot of crazy diseases that they think the child has. Um, they might think the child has HIV because uh, uh, the child uh, uh, handshaked with another person and stuff like this. They, they might tell the children stuff like this, which is really, really out of, um, it's 
is not really normal thinking, okay? Um, they are very concerned uh, about being right. So if the doctors or nurses or wh whomever they are in contact with will tell them that, you know, your child is fine, they will not take that as, as a good answer. And sometimes doctors do wrong, so don't get me wrong. There's, there's a lot of, lot of instances that um, doctors do wrong and, you, and parents shouldn't give up. But in these kind of instances, it's like, the doctors are never right, and, and, and they are going from hospital to hospital to hospital to get the right answer, or the answer that the, the mother is right, basically, so to speak. And there are doctors that will start medical procedures on healthy children to, to basically please the, the parents. And there have been a lot of instances where doctors have even started and operated surgeries on healthy children and like I said these mothers will sometimes if they don't get what they want they will starve their children up until they are almost dead and uh, of course then doctors will see that the child is not healthy but uh, they don't know the story they don't know what is going on. Children. These mothers will then tell that uh, that my child doesn't want to eat, doesn't want to drink. And the true story is that the mother is depraving the child of food and water, or food or fluids. So uh, I'm going to talk more about this topic. And this was like a, a reintroduction to the topic because there's a long time since I've talked about this. And the first video I made was more about, you know, a little bit about my own personal experiences. And the thing that I'm telling in this video is things that I, not all of it, but most of it is things that I, I have experienced. Um, it is horrifying. Um, it helps to talk about it. And um, it is basically like living with the devil himself. And it pretends to be your mother. And everything these people tell usually is a blatant lie. And that's what you realize when you grow older usually. Um, but like I said, this is a reintroduction to the topic. I want to talk more about this because I want to make people aware about this. This is happening. Um, to a lot of children and this is heavily underreported because nobody nobody uh, saw through what uh, happened in my instance nobody understood what was going on and it went very far um, and even now nobody has really been held accountable for what happened and that is usually the, the, the way things happen it's usually these people are not they are not um, they are not caught, and people do not uh, suspect these people even of what they're doing because it's very difficult for a doctor or nurses to suspect that the mother is hurting her own child. It's kind of like the last thing they think about. Think about that. You know, you don't want to say that. You maybe you did this to your own child. You know, a doctor don't want to say that. they are not caught, and people do not. Uh, suspect these people even of what they're doing because it's very difficult for a doctor or nurses to suspect that the mother is hurting her own child it's kind of like the last thing they think about think about that you know you don't want to say that you maybe you did this to your own child you know a doctor don't want to say that but that is what happens in, 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 in some instances in some cases that is happening it's it's a absolute perversion of human nature absolute perversion of how a mother should be so um, yeah uh, and this links these all of these people are narcissistic and some of these mothers have also had traumas as a child and some people say that it's a way for them to relive their own traumas. But I mean, uh, for me, 
it is basically I have seen this and it, it might be some of the cases it is like that but it, this is really you, you deal with people that have absolutely no empathy whatsoever and they are all only thinking about themselves so yeah I'm, I'm, like I said I'm gonna make a video on more on this topic and uh, to talk about this uh, <coughs>